What is going on with Streamlabs and OBS? Up next, here on Code News. I wanted to do this before too many non-coder news YouTubers start saying stuff that they don't understand, but we're gonna cover the basics first. All right, so what happened here? What's all this drama with OBS? Well, I will quickly go over it and please, if I miss anything or I'm overlooking something, let me know down below. Let us know down below and we'll try to figure. All right, editor Matt popping in here. <laughs> Trying to get this out to you guys. Um, I, I realized I missed a few things. There was a lot of other accusations of things that got copied and ripped off from other companies that I don't address in this video. But I'm going to leave a link down below to a uh, video made by a guy named, I don't know what his name is, Alpha Gaming, who covers a lot of the other ripoffs. We're not going to be covering those. We're mainly going to be looking at strictly OBS and Streamlabs. So, uh, so really, this all started with a tweet from OBS. And here's what it is. It's, uh, well, I'm not sure if this is exactly how it started. Near the launch of Slobs, Streamlabs, OBS, Streamlabs reached out to us about using the OBS name. We kindly asked them not to. They did so anyway and followed up by... Okay, I guess this is the tweet that started it. In case you haven't figured out the very base of this. So OBS is used for streaming and recording. I use it all the time. OBS or OBS Studio. And Streamlabs, of course, made their own version and that we're going to go over and we're going to look at some of this code too and analyze a little more about how this is all done. So look forward to that. Okay, so OBS project. This is the first one, the main one. Legally, they have obeyed the terms of the GPL, but have repeatedly disregarded the spirit of open source. All right, so this is a bit tricky. Uh, okay, despite the actions, OBS project will continue to provide free open source. So OBS and, and is not too happy about this, obviously. Now, there's one thing missing here that I haven't been able to find, and I wonder if anybody's been able to find it. There's this call out here, all right, the big call out. But I have not seen the receipts for this. Doesn't mean they're not there. Doesn't mean they're wrong. I, it seems like they're being honest, especially given that Streamlabs followed up and kind of acknowledged it. But there's no indication of these messages. There's no, uh, I want to see these reach out. What did the, what was said? What did Streamlabs say? What did OBS say back? No one's seen that. All we've got is these tweets as far as I know. So is that enough? To believe all this well according to the internet yes now it's also important to note here that as we looked at no laws were violated so no legal action is actually able to be taken here other than maybe with the name obs because the whole issue is streamlabs took this obs and just put it onto their product and if we just hop over to reddit we can try to find a little bit more information and do some digging on these posts sometimes people have links and stuff to things that are relevant so i'm gonna have a gander and see what we can find and here well this is just kind of more of the sentiment of what's going on this guy thought that streamlabs partnered with obs to put software out for the longest time they're not partnered they just took the name that is the whole problem there is this whole illusion that they're in cahoots together that there are projects that work together teams work together and they don't at all it's obs is open source so that you can uh, use it in its code. And also Streamlabs OBS is also open source, so you can use their stuff as well. That's not really exactly relevant to this, but just throwing that out there. And naturally we got some big names throwing their hat in the ring. Really thought they were associated with you guys. Just a different version. Thank you for the software. It's revolutionized the way many of us do our jobs. That's from Jack Septiguy, who thought they were associated. In ammunition, thought they were a collaborative product as well. I thought Streamlabs made OBS. Okay, so the big thing here is just everybody thinks they're the same product because of the name. And yeah, that's a bit shady. There's definitely something shady about that. And naturally, the, the world of the internet has kind of gone on a rampage about this whole thing and really showing the original OBS project a lot of support and really bashing Streamlabs. And I've even heard people live stream and say they're switching off Streamlabs OBS and going back to OBS Studio, uh, but they gotta change their setup and adapt things or maybe they're going to stream elements. And it's just really kind of crazy in a way. I'll give you my opinion shortly. I'm kind of just reviewing what other people are saying right now. All right, and there's just a lot of streamers just coming out and, and just showing support for the OBS. It just, it's it's cool to see 
and a lot of people just saying, hey, reminder that Streamlabs OBS is not OBS. Don't think you're supporting OBS when you're supporting Streamlabs. That seems to be the core issue is just that confusion with people going and supporting Streamlabs OBS, thinking they're supporting the people that actually made OBS, which isn't the case. Now, I did see somewhere that Streamlabs said that they were going to be renaming and taking the OBS off of their name, but I cannot find it for the life of me. I think it was somewhere in a tweet, but I've looked over their Twitter and I can't find it, but Streamlabs somewhere did say that they're going to take the OBS off the name, and the general response to that was, yeah, since you got caught, now you're going to change your name, but you didn't just have respect to begin with, so people aren't super thrilled, but at least they're taking action and trying to do the right thing. Streamlabs obviously shouldn't have used the name OBS in their name if the original creator said, hey, I'd prefer that you don't. But it doesn't change the fact that uh, there are no receipts for that conversation. As far as we know, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here, the original OBS guy could have just made that up a couple days ago just because they were annoyed with Streamlabs. They're like, all right, let's put this out then. But you know, anybody can say anything like that way later, but if you don't have the original messages where you politely ask them not to use the name to begin with, who knows if they're lying or not? Now, I don't think they're lying. Just playing devil's advocate, to be very clear on that. I would love to see the original messages. I'm sure we all would. It seems like in general, and this is one thing that kind of bothers me, is nobody seems to care about that. They're just kind of blindly believing the accusation, which uh, I don't think you're supposed to be doing. I don't, I'm not a lawyer, but pretty sure that's not something you do. If you accuse someone of something, especially something that's going to really like mess up your reputation, you kind of need some proof that uh, what you're saying is true. And of course, there's obviously proof of the name. They're obviously using the name OBS, but they did very clearly state in their tweet that uh, they asked them to not use the name and it was ignored. I just want to see that original message if it exists. Do you? Or does it matter? Let me know. So is it worth back switching back to just OBS Studio? Now, there is a reason that people use Streamlabs OBS, and it's because it adds a lot of nice functionality for streamers. That can't be discounted. There's a lot of people that aren't going to switch because they're going to lose a lot of their features, or it's going to be annoying for them to have to reset up all their stream stuff, and they might lose days of content doing so. It seems clear that it's not like Streamlabs is only stealing, they are adding something that is useful to people despite stealing the name. It's not like they're just completely saying, this is tricky to say right, maybe I'm just going to stop there, you guys probably get the point. Alright, and now we're going to get to the point where we're going to look at some of this code, alright? We're going to look at OBS, these are all open source projects. So the original OBS, I think this is the original, uh, I'm not exactly a code historian on this, but the original one by JP9000 looks like it was put together last releases in 2016. So this is kind of a dated project, but OBS Studio, I, I don't know exactly what happened here. I don't know uh, how it went from OBS to OBS Studio or what's going on there, but OBS Studio is hugely popular and seems to be where all the current updates to OBS are actually going. OBS Studio just offers some additional features and is just still part of the OBS project. So yeah, I guess they do say here that this is depreciated, see OBS Studio instead. So it looks like it got changed over to OBS Studio, but it's cool that we can go look at the original code. And here's OBS Studio, all the code. Uh, we don't want to dig in like super deep because it's going to get confusing, but you can support them. Highly recommended if you use the software. I plan on doing so as soon as I can. I'm recording on OBS Studio right now. Uh, I also do use Streamlabs for streaming sometimes, but I could go either way. Literally the only reason I use both of them is just so I can have two separate profiles. A profile for recording and a profile for streaming, and it's just easy to have two separate programs. But I'm not particularly attached to Streamlabs, so I could ditch it if I really wanted to. And as you might be able to tell so far, yeah, I kind of want to, just to support OBS, but also it's going to mess up my flow and take a bunch of time, so I'm going to see what comes of this in the long run before I make that final decision. All right, the code. So you can see from the OBS project, they've got C and C++, CMake, Objective-C, uh, mainly C and C++. So this is primarily built with C++, which is awesome, cool. 
and you can go look at the exact code. You can see exactly how they do everything. They've got Direct3D, OpenGL, uh, lots of lots of stuff. All public for coders like you and me to go learn from. All right, cool. So uh, as long as you follow the license, you can use this stuff. You could make your own whatever using this. All right, so let's look at Streamlabs now. And this is where things get interesting. Streamlabs. All right, so this is free and open source streaming software built on OBS and Electron. Now I gotta give them some credit for making this open source. They, they might have to based on the license. I don't know, I'm not a license expert. So I guess you guys can uh, hash that out if you know better. But basically they use Electron, which is just a way to code up a uh, interface basically with HTML and JavaScript and all that. Uh, I'm not an expert with that, but Electron I think is used to make Slack and some other programs. It's, it's just good for uh, making windowed software basically. So they basically say they use OBS and Electron to make this whole new interface and version. So let's take a look here. If we look at the languages used in all this code, there's not a single bit of C and not a single bit of C++. Now, why is that? Because they're not writing a single bit. They're using exactly OBS's source code and bringing that in as like a sub-module. Yeah, they're using TypeScript to do their interface and some view uh, for probably their layouts. And they're basically just coding up an interface around OBS and then calling it Streamlabs OBS. And that's where the issue really came in. We really don't like that they use that OBS name. Uh, I don't know where it is exactly, but there's something in here that basically brings in the OBS project so that they can work on top of it. Now, it's pretty cool that they have all their Electron code and all that, and they tell you how to build it if you want to build it. And it looks like they've probably added some new stuff here. Let's see, when was this README updated? Let's, let's look at the README where you at. Updated 12 hours ago. So after being called out and shamed, they have decided to finally acknowledge how important OBS is, basically. At its core, Streamlabs desktop is powered by OBS desktop. So this, this is new. They didn't have this here before. They weren't really given a big shout out to OBS. It wasn't clear that they were not the developers of OBS, but now it is being made clear. And I think this is a, this is definitely a good thing, but really, yes, of course they should have been doing this to begin with. I don't know what they were thinking by not giving them proper credit to begin with. Honestly, that is a little weird, but they still were doing what they legally were supposed to do and following the, the GPL license, as far as I understand. I wanna know what you guys think. It's really nice to see people supporting the original product and clarity being made about the difference between Streamlabs OBS and OBS. And yes, they definitely need to be changing their name uh, off of the Streamlabs OBS. That makes sense, I think, given all the confusion and the community feedback. And it sounds like they've agreed to. So they're trying to do the right thing, but is it true that they're only doing it because they're getting called out and, and basically hated by the public for it? According to those original tweets where the OBS project said that they you know, didn't obey what they asked to begin with, the, it seems like Streamlabs is in the wrong. Would love to see the original conversation, just proof that it happened, proof that they asked them not to use the name and they did it anyway, because anybody could just blindly accuse anyone of anything and they'd blow through. But given that Streamlabs said, okay, we'll change our name, our name that kind of admits it's like a guilty admission, because I didn't see anything of Streamlabs saying like, hey, uh, you never actually asked. So they're kind of acknowledging that to begin with. But is that enough proof? Well, that's that's the drama. Just covering a little code drama. This doesn't really affect most of us too much. But there's a few important lessons to learn here. And I think the biggest thing is to just give credit to the people who enabled your project. Especially if they're the core of it. And just pretending to be the person who made the core of it is really shady in general. If you're making a project that inherits from something else. Yeah, it's just not good for any open source developer to have their work stolen. It it gives a it gives a lot of incentive for future developers to hide their code because they don't want it stolen. So yeah, we gotta we gotta shame Streamlabs at least a little for doing that sort of shady tactic. Thanks for watching. If you like seeing these sort of code drama news videos, please let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. It would mean a lot. And also join 
and become a member of Code Tech and Tutorials for some bonus stuff and bonus content. And it really, really helps me continue to make videos and supports me going forward in this whole YouTube endeavor that I'm doing. So thank you very much, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.